state government has decided that discussion should continue on a proposed nuclear waste facility. The government has also concluded that the only path forward is through the restoration of bipartisanship and a broad social consent secured through a statewide referendum. I believe that continued public debate about South Australia's role in the nuclear fuel cycle is an important discussion for South Australia. But ultimately it's a matter that people should decide, not politicians. If broad social consent were to be achieved through a referendum, a local Aboriginal community would also be given a final right of veto on any future facility on their lands. So these two vetoes, broad community and also a specific local veto for Aboriginal people represents, in my view, a path forward for future discussions. I want to now talk about some of the reasons for why we've reached uh, those conclusions. As previously stated, this couldn't be a bigger or more controversial issue. It was always going to challenge our democracy. And so we had to think about ways in which we could design a process that would accommodate something as big as this. That's why in 2015 the State Government established the Royal Commission to investigate South Australia's future role in the nuclear fuel cycle. It was about providing a foundation of facts using the highest form of fact-finding that we have available to us as a government. In May of this year, the Royal Commission, headed by former Governor Kevin Scarce, delivered its report and made 12 recommendations and we'll provide our formal response uh, to each of those in, in Parliament tomorrow. But to help develop our response to the Royal Commission, the State Government launched the biggest consultation project ever undertaken in the State's history. The process began with the Citizens' Jury, which identified the idea of nuclear waste disposal as the most significant aspect of the Commission's report and focused on key themes which were numbered four, safety, consent, trust and economics. Since then, more than 50,000 South Australians have had their say as our Nuclear Response Agency toured the state, speaking to people uh, everywhere from uh, the AP Wylands to Mount Gambier and everywhere in between. And this process uncovered a diverse range of views within the community. For instance, a survey of more than 4,000 people conducted by the agency found that 43% of South Australians support pursuing the idea further, while 37% were opposed and the other undecided. In contrast, a citizen's jury of 350 people delivered, deliberated on a proposal over three weekends, and ultimately two-thirds decided the issue shouldn't be pursued further. The message we heard from the citizen's jury was about trust. They didn't feel that they trusted the process the Royal Commission, the evidence, and for some, even the citizens' jury process itself. So the government had to make sense of these competing perspectives. On the one hand, more people than not wanting the discussion to continue. On the other hand, a citizens' jury saying that the discussion should end now. Given that trust was at the heart of the citizens' jury's concerns, our judgment is that the best way forward is to restore that trust by putting the decision in the hands of people, not parties, not politicians. This is a critical issue and it needs to be addressed and the way in which we believe it can be addressed is through the referendum we have proposed. Similarly, for Aboriginal people, there was enormous distrust of non-Aboriginal people and frankly an expectation that this process would simply mean that their views would be overridden by sheer force of numbers. By providing a right of veto to a local Aboriginal community concerning their land, their concerns can be allayed. And these twin vetoes, the veto of the broader community through referendum and the veto associated with a local Aboriginal community given the specific uh, and, uh, I suppose, unpleasant history of their involvement, not only with nuclear issues, but with uh, their views 
more generally being systematically disrespected, are crucial elements in rebuilding the trust. I think one of the things that uh, was profound about the citizens' jury process, and that's why a deeper understanding of the citizens' jury process is necessary before we reached our conclusion, is the way in which 350 mainly non-Aboriginal people were powerfully influenced by the perspectives of the small number of Aboriginal people who were on the jury and also the, the Aboriginal people that spoke to them. In some ways, um, as I said, that was not the expectation of the Aboriginal community, that the broader community would take on their concerns as thoroughly and completely, and it, it being such a profound part of the second citizen's jury process. But I see that as a positive. And one of the things that we're seeking to do here is to grapple with this fundamental issue of distrust that occurs between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal South Australians. This isn't just an issue for the Nuclear Fuel Cycle Royal Commission. This remains an issue for other uh, developments and activities that are going to occur in lands uh, that are regarded by the Aboriginal people as their own. So this remains unfinished but important work for the South Australian community. Similarly, when we were in Finland, one of the powerful learnings from my perspective was that uh, the local community there was given a right of veto over this decision. And they explained to me that that gave them greater trust in the process than they had before. Knowing that they could ultimately say no at any time gave them the trust to participate in the process, which ultimately, as we've seen, has led uh, to the outcome in Finland. So what we also know uh, since we last spoke is that uh, uh, the opposition leader has withdrawn uh, his party's support uh, for the Nuclear Fuel Cycle Royal Commission and its particular recommendation about a waste facility. And the withdrawal of bipartisan support is, of course, significant. The Royal Commission was clear. Bipartisanship is essential. The government has consistently said that without bipartisanship, the proposal could not progress. We place great importance uh, on bipartisanship on this issue and at every opportunity we've reached out to the Liberal Party to seek to maintain it. That's why we acted quickly to establish a joint committee of the Parliament, paying respect not just to uh, the Liberal Party but also uh, the crossbenchers uh, representing Family First and also uh, the Greens on that joint committee of the Parliament. And its work continues. It's also why we extended an invitation to the Leader of the Opposition for him to join us to tour Finland's nuclear facility. And when it wasn't convenient for him to do so on that occasion, we reorganised the visit uh, for him to attend. However, without bipartisan support, this option of a nuclear waste fuel cycle facility for South Australia cannot proceed further. A referendum, of course, would require bipartisan support before it could be promoted. So from this point onwards, um, we believe discussion should continue. There are a wide range of perspectives in the South Australian community. There is a wealth of information which has now been developed. It now uh, serves as a resource for the community uh, to pursue this discussion. We've already seen different perspectives being expressed today by uh, different uh, members of parliament. And no doubt we'll continue to have different perspectives being expressed by the broader community. <music>